So what would happen if you took the kid's go-kart, doubled the batteries, and tripled the sides of the motor? Yeah. <laughs> You okay, old man? Yeah. Oh, my shorts got stuck. Oh, my pants. Oh, I love these pants. <laughs> I know. Wear a helmet. Boy, did I get a lot of slack for not wearing a helmet. Eesh. So I got this go-kart a couple years ago, used, wasn't working. Got it working initially, I think I just replaced some batteries. Kids rode it for a little while, then it started smoking. Not sure what it was, might have been the motor, might have been the motor controller, didn't have time to mess with it. After it broke, I started looking into what it would take to soup it up so that I could ride it. Turns out it's not hard at all. I wanted this to be something that could be reproducible. So if somebody could watch this video, if you've got one of these old ground force go-karts laying around, you could do the same conversion and it would be pretty easy. This took me maybe eight hours total. And if I had to do it again and had all the right parts, I bet I could do it in less than two. It really was that easy. Originally, this go-kart ran on two 12 volt batteries connected in series for a total of 24 volts and a 250 watt motor. I decided to go with 48 volts and a thousand watt motor. Then found on eBay, a whole package motor motor controller, throttle, charger, and even a key lock. Perfect. That way I knew that all of it was going to be compatible. Motor, motor controller, charger. First thing I had to do was strip all the old stuff off. The motor cover comes off pretty easy. The motor comes out pretty easy. The controller comes out pretty easy. Really isn't very hard to tear this thing down. I took the seat off too because I thought under the seat would be a good place to put the batteries. Fortunately, I didn't have to do a lot of modifications to get the motor to mount. The holes didn't quite line up, so I did have to drill a couple new holes in the mounting plate on the go-kart frame and two new holes in the motor mount. So the motor fit nicely, but the chain was too short. So I got some chain extensions. If you've never replaced a chain before, it's not too hard, but you do need a special tool called a chain brake that pushes on the link pin and lets you remove the outer plate. Then you can remove the old link pins and replace them with the new one. The new connector link is made so that you don't need a special press to put it together, just a pair of pliers. And then the chain was a little too long. But I put a couple of washers under the motor mount, lifted the motor up, eighth of an inch, and now it seems to be about right. Figuring out how to raise the seat was a little challenging, but I think I got a good solution. To raise the seat, I got some six inch threaded bolts with three nuts and a couple lock washers for each bolt. I had this aluminum tubing, which I guess not everybody's gonna have. You could probably use half inch conduit instead. I did that because the way the seat mounts are rounded, Seemed like a better idea to have something round in there. I also wanted it to extend a little bit so that I could have an extra bolt a little further back so that all of the seat mounts weren't just in the middle. I was afraid that could get a little bit unstable. 
not very strong. Once I got the bolts in, I was concerned that I was going to have a lot of lateral force. We're going to go around a corner and the seat's going to just tip and those bolts are just going to twist and bend. If I didn't have some sort of a crossing support, I spaced out the screws so that I would have enough room to put the batteries in between the crossing supports. Make sure you get the seat plenty high. The batteries are about four, maybe four and a quarter by the time you get the connectors on top. So you want your seat to be at least four and a half inches. I found that sitting on the seat caused it to sag a little and I was knocking the battery connectors off. So I raised the seat as much as I could and then I hot glued the battery connectors. And since then they've stopped falling off. The motor controller didn't come with a wiring diagram. The connectors were labeled but the main throttle connector had some weird word like derailleur or something. It didn't say throttle, um, but the wire colors matched. I tried it out and it worked. The easy thing to do was to use the connectors from the old motor controller so that they plugged in to the throttle and the brake. The connector for the push button or the, or the key switch in my case was labeled power stop. There were some other connectors on the motor controller that I didn't have use for and didn't connect. The large red and black wires connect to the battery and the blue and yellow wire connect to the motor. Make sure you've got the blue and yellow connected to the motor so that the motor goes forward when you push the throttle and not backwards. It's easy to just switch them if you've got them wrong. It actually worked out that I could put the housing back on top of the motor and the controller. I did raise the housing up a little bit because it looked like the chain and the sprocket on the motor might rub a little bit. So I did raise them up a little bit with a, some washers. <clears throat> you saw what happened on my first test drive. <laughs> this is a ground forced drift. So the wheels are really hard and really slick. It's made to burn out and to slide and drift. According to an app on my phone, the fastest I went was 19 or 20 miles an hour. It felt a lot faster than that. When you're this far off the ground, I was really shocked that I wasn't going faster. The great news is the battery lasted 37 minutes before they needed to be recharged. That's awesome. I could drive that sucker to work. All right, well, that was a good time. That thing is fun. I've got kids begging me to ride it all the time. I'd love to do a couple more of these. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful to you. If you decide to do this, let me know. If you have any problems, I'll help you if I can. In the meantime, adios.